so here we are going to calculate the magnetic field on the axle line of a circular current carrying coil circular coil means it is nothing but the current carrying coil here so how to calculate the magnetic field on the axle line of a circular current carrying coil for that first we need to choose a current carrying coil let me choose this is a circular current carrying coil whose radius is equal to r so r is the radius of this coil capital r is representing the radius of this circular coil let me choose this coil is placed along the placed in the yz plane it is placed in yz plane and this is the x axis or this is said to be the axis of the coil axis of the coil means if this is the coil this is in the yz plane and this is the x axis so the axis is nothing but the straight line passing through the center of the coil and perpendicular to its plane what is axial line of a coil means a line which is passing through the center and perpendicular to the plane is said to be the axial line so here this is representing the axial line so i'll indicate the axial line with the dotted lines dotted line says that it is perpendicular to the coil so dotted line is nothing but perpendicular to the coil i can say plane of the coil so this is x axis let me treat now the coil is in yz plane is a y axis and this is z axis this is y axis this is z axis that means the coil is like this it is not like this it is like this and this is the axis of the coil so axis of the coil is nothing but what it is a line passing through its center and perpendicular to its plane so the axial line is nothing but the line passing through the center of the coil and perpendicular to its plane now perpendicular lines are indicated with dotted dot dots here now here let me choose through this there is a current is passing through this one a current is passing in this way if this is a coil this is the coil the current is passing in this way i am taking that means in anti clockwise sense current is passing current is passing in this way let i be the current in this coil and n be the number of turns let me choose small n represents the number of turns i is the current passing through this one then what is the magnetic field at this point is the question to find the magnetic field at this point let me choose this point is at a distance of x from center this is the origin 0 comma 0 comma 0 and from here let me choose this distance as some x so x represents the axial line distance i want to calculate the magnetic field at this point p which is at a distance of x from the center of the coil that means if this is a coil i want to calculate the magnetic field here this is the coil here i want to calculate the magnetic field is it clear now for to for to sorry in order to calculate the magnetic field at this point let me choose a current element here this is a small elemental length of conductor dl through this one current is i therefore current element is equal to i into dl current element is nothing but i into dl because of this current element i am going to calculate the magnetic field at this point so now i have to draw a displacement vector from the current element to the point and this is the displacement vector let me choose the length of this is equal to r now if you see this one this is a right angle triangle this being right angle triangle using pythagoras theorem small r is nothing but square root of capital r square plus x square so i can write it as square root of r square plus x square which can also be written as r is equal to r square plus x square whole to the power of half is it clear now previously in order to calculate the magnetic field we have used the bio servert law there we have discussed about the how to calculate the strength of magnetic field in order to get the direction of magnetic field we are having a simple rule called as right hand clasp rule what this right hand clasp rule will say first we'll discuss about the right hand clasp rule clasp rule and then we'll go with this one what the right hand clasp rule will say, uh, clasp rule will, uh, will say means if this is a current carrying conductor hold this current carrying conductor in your right hand like this such that the thumb is pointing the direction of current so if this is a current carrying conductor and current is passing in upward direction just hold the conductor with your which hand right hand only we should hold it such that thumb is pointing the direction of current then the fingers which are encircling the conductor encircling means which are rounding off the conductor will give the direction of magnetic field is it clear this is called as right hand clasp rule 
or right hand thumb rule which is used to find out the magnetic field due to the current carrying conductor. I will tell you more clearly here. Let me choose this is a straight current carrying conductor carrying a current of I amperes, carrying a current of I amperes. Now I am holding this conductor like this. Now if I hold it like this such that thumb is pointing whom, thumb is pointing in the direction of current. Then these fingers encircling the conductor should give the direction of what magnetic field. So what is the direction of magnetic field means here, here the direction is into the board and here it is out of the board. Therefore, here it is into the board and this side it is out of the board. And the magnetic field lines will be there along the circular path. So this is in accordance with the, this law is developed based on the observations made by the Oersted. What Oersted has observed when a current is passing through a conductor, he notices deflection in the magnetic compass, yes or no. Then he has taken some uh, iron fillings and he has placed the iron fillings around the conductor, current carrying conductor. Those iron fillings were noticed to be uh, f forming the concentric circles. Concentric circle means all the circles are having the common center. And uh, so here, if you observe here, like this, the iron fillings will be there. So that means around the current carrying conductor, the magnetic field will be following the circular paths. But the strength in different circles will be different. If the radius is less, then strength is more. If radius is more, strength of magnetic field is less. But the magnetic field is directed along those concentric circles only. So right hand thumb rule is useful for finding the direction of magnetic field at a given place for due to the current carrying conductor. So what is the right hand thumb rule which is very important rule? If you hold the current carrying conductor in our right hand such that thumb is pointing the direction of current then the fingers encircling the conductor, fingers which are rounding off the conductor will give the direction of magnetic field. In this case if you see the magnetic field lines are anti-clockwise in sense like this. If the current is passing downward then hold it like this, then it is in which sense? Clockwise sense. Is it clear? So if suppose, if this is a current carrying conductor, current is passing in this direction, then hold with your right hand such that current is in this direction, then what is the direction of magnetic field above this conductor? Above the conductor, the direction is towards you. And below the conductor, what is the direction of magnetic field? Towards me. Is it clear or not? So based on this, they will be framing some questions in the CET standard or in board exam also. Suppose a current carrying conductor is kept in east-west direction. Let me choose this is east, this is west, east, west, north, south. So now I am placing the conductor in east-west direction. This is east for me. Let me choose east-west. This is north and this is south. Let me choose. Now. The current is con current carrying conductor is placed in east west direction and current is passing from west to east. Then I have to hold the conductor like this. They will ask the question like this when a conductor is placed along east west direction and the current is passing from west to east, what is the direction of magnetic field above the conductor? Above the conductor, just open your fingers like this. What is this direction? I told you I have taken this is north, this is south. So what is the direction of magnetic field? Above the conductor it is towards south. Below the conductor what is the direction? Below the conductor it is towards north. Is it clear? For me east, west, north, south. So below the conductor it is towards the north and above the conductor it is towards the south. Is it clear? So like this they will frame the questions uh, for one marks. And if it is a straight conductor I am using this right hand clasp rule or right hand thumb rule. Can I use this one? This one in order to find out the direction of magnetic field in the case of circular coils. It's very simple even for circular coils also we can use this uh, right hand clasp rule but in this case the thumb indicates the magnetic field and the curling fingers will indicate the direction of current. It's very simple. See here if this is a coil and current is passing through the coil in this way, current is passing through the coil in this way, then hold the conductor like this. This is representing current now and this is representing magnetic field. Previous case, this is current and this is magnetic field and the present case, whenever there are coils or loops, you change, you take, take these fingers as representation of current and this will indicate the direction of magnetic field. Now current is passing in this way, then hold the conductor like this, thumb is pointing the direction of magnetic field. Suppose current is passing like this, then 
the magnetic field is directed like this. Now, according to that, here if you see current is in which case coil is like this, current is coming like this, then what is the direction of magnetic field? Direction of magnetic field is towards the positive x direction, is it clear? So, the direction of magnetic field at this location will be like this, along the positive x direction it will be there. Is it clear or not? That is uh, finally we will discuss it later. Now we will see here. Because of this current element, now this is a coil and this is a point. Let me choose this is a point and this is a coil. If I take the R like this, if you see here the current element is above like this, it is like this, current element is tangential and R is like this. Always R is perpendicular to ideal. Therefore, what is the angle between ideal and R bar? Angle between ideal and R bar that is theta is always equal to. 90 degrees. If this is a coil, this is ideal. Ideal is tangential like this, sorry. Ideal is tangential like this and R bar is like this. So, angle between R bar and ideal is 90 degrees at any point. Therefore, this angle will be theta. Is it clear? Do not think this angle is more than 90. It is wrong. Here, ideal is perpendicular to R bar. Therefore, theta is equal to 90 degrees. Now, because of this one, what is the magnetic field at this location? Now, look here. Here, we are going to calculate magnetic field first because of this current element. Because of this current element, when current is passing in this way, this is a coil, current is passing like this. According to right hand class rule, if it is a straight conductor, this part is straight conductor, hold it like this. So, what is the direction of magnetic field here? It is coming out like this. Therefore, at this point, the direction of magnetic field should be above. Hence, I will indicate the, I will indicate the magnetic field in this way. At this point, the magnetic field is indicated like this. This is the direction using the right hand class rule I am finding out. DB bar. Why DB bar means? Because of small element I am calculating magnetic field. Let me take it as DB bar. Now, this is a y axis, this is x axis. Let me take this angle as some alpha, then this angle will be alpha. It is a three dimensional figure. So, this being alpha, this will become alpha. Now, what is this db in this direction? db cos alpha, whereas this db in this direction is db sin alpha. So, sin alpha component is along the axis and the cos component is perpendicular to the axis. For every element here, there exists a diametrically opposite element here such that the magnetic field is directed downward. That means, because of this element here, here this is representing ideal and here this is representing ideal. So, here because of this element, magnetic field here will be directed downward. Therefore, this is uh, db bar we will be having because of the lower current element, if you want to take you can join like this. So, this is alpha, this will be alpha, then this is db cos alpha and this is another db sin alpha. So, sin alpha components are adding up and cos components are cancelling each other. So, there finally, because of the entire loop, which components are adding up means only the sin components are adding up while the, while as whereas the cost components are cancelling each other. That is why the net magnetic field due to the circular coil is directed along the axial line. Is it clear or not? Then in order to find out that we will uh, use the Biot servert law. Now first uh, let us write what we have taken. So, I am not taking this once again. I am not taking. It is enough to take one part. Now, what we have considered here? We have considered a coil. What type of coil we have considered? Circular coil with radius capital R and let me take the number of turns in that coil is equal to small n. So, consider a current carrying coil, consider a current carrying coil, current carrying coil of n turns of n turns carrying a current of i amperes, carrying a current of i amperes, carrying a current of i. 
okay choose r as radius of coil what we are choosing here we are choosing r as the radius of coil choose r as radius of coil and x being the axial line distance x being the axial distance axial distance of the point of the point where we are calculating magnetic field where we are calculating magnetic field where we are calculating magnetic field so what we have chosen here we have chosen a coil current carrying coil we have chosen and how many number of turns are there in this coil n number of turns are there and i is the current passing through it and we are also choosing r is the radius of the coil and x is the axial line distance of that point from the center of the coil and at this point we are going to calculate the net magnetic field now using biot servert law what is the magnetic field due to that current element first we will discuss using biot servert law using biot servert law using biot servert law the magnetic field due to current element is given by the magnetic field due to current element due to current element is given by current element is given by db is equal to mu not by 4 pi into i into dl into sin 90 degrees divided by r square is it clear y sin 90 taken means angle between this dl idl and r will be 90 degrees because this is a coil this is a small r and here this r and this line always they are perpendicular to each other therefore this angle will be 90 degrees which cannot be shown in this diagram it is a two dimensional diagram so this is 90 degrees therefore this can be rewritten as this is db is equal to this therefore this can be written as db is equal to mu not idl divided by 4 pi into r square is it clear plus now we have taken the value of db using the biot servert law but we want what we want the axial components anyhow the perpendicular components are cancelling therefore we no need to bother about the db cos alpha we have to bother only about the db sin alpha components the axial component of magnetic field the axial component of magnetic field component of magnetic field is given by is given by db sin alpha that is equal to db into sin alpha means what according to this right angle triangle sin alpha is nothing but opposite side divided by hypotenuse therefore sin alpha is nothing but capital r divided by small r therefore i can write it as capital r divided by small r i can write like this already we know the value of db which is equal to mu not by 4 pi into i dl divided by r square this is capital r divided by sin alpha we are taking sorry uh, sin alpha is nothing but what we are having opposite side by this so this can be written as capital r divided by small r this is mu not by 4 pi into i dl into r divided by small r cube this is mu not by 4 pi into i dl into r divided by what is this small r here small r is nothing but square root of r square plus x square which can be written as r square plus x square whole power half therefore write it like this r square plus x square whole power half whole cube so r is nothing but r square plus x square whole power half and here cube is there therefore i am writing the cube term 
Therefore, this can be rewritten as mu naught by 4 pi into I d L into R divided by R square plus x square whole to the power of 3 by 2. This is what we are having. This is the axial component of magnetic field due to that particular current element. But I want the entire magnetic field at this point because of the whole loop. Because of whole loop if I want, I have to add all the axial components. Anyhow, vertical components are cancelling, therefore I have to add all the axial line components. How to add all the axial line components means by using the summation. That is uh, using the superposition principle or using the summation, the net magnetic field the net magnetic field along the axial line, the net magnetic field along axial line, along axial line is given by, is given by, by B is equal to sigma into dB sin alpha. Already we had the value of dB sin alpha. What is this dB sin alpha? Let me take it as equation 1. Therefore, I can write it as sigma dB sin alpha is nothing but mu naught by 4 pi into I d L into R divided by R square plus x square whole power 3 by 2 using equation 1, using equation 1. Is it clear? This is the entire magnetic field along the axial line. B axial I can write. Is it clear or not? Now, so if you see this, B axial is equal to, in this one, R is radius of the coil which is constant, X is the axial line distance, we are fixing the distance X value, therefore here X is fixed, R is fixed, I is also fixed, the st st steady current is passing through the wi wire or through the coil, therefore I is also fixed, mu naught by 4 pi is also fixed. Then what is the variable here? Only the DL, length element is changing. Length element is changing from here to here, that means uh, complete length of the circle. What is the complete length of the circle? Nothing but the circumference of circle. What is the circumference of the circle? 2 pi r, where r is the radius. Therefore, sigma DL is nothing but what? Sigma DL is nothing but the circumference of the circle. Therefore, I can write it as Writing the constant terms out of summation, I can write it as mu naught by 4 pi into I into capital R divided by R square plus X square whole to the power of 3 by 2 into sigma DL. Is it clear? So, mu naught by 4 pi into I into capital R divided by R square plus X square whole power 3 by 2 into sigma DL. So, this is equal to mu naught into I into R divided by 4 pi into r square plus x square whole power 3 by 2 into sigma dl is nothing but the whole length of this loop. Whole length of the loop is nothing but the circumference of that loop. What is the circumference of the loop? 2 pi into capital R. Since sigma dl is equal to 2 pi r, this implies r into r is r square, r into r is r square. 1, 2 will cancel here, then I can write it as mu naught into I into pi is there, I am writing pi r into r r square divided by. So, pi also I can cancel here, 2 pi will go here 2 times, therefore I will remove this pi also, then I can write mu naught into I into r square divided by. 2 pi will go here 2 times, therefore 2 into r square plus x square whole power 3 by 2. This is a magnetic field on the axial line due to a single loop, due to a single loop, due to loop. But now, we have chosen how many number of turns are there, n number of turns are there. Because of all turns, if you consider, the net magnetic field is nothing but, I have to multiply this with n. For n number of turns, for n turns, for n turns in the coil, B axial is equal to what? So, for one turn, this is a magnetic field. If n number of turns are there, just I have to multiply that with n. Therefore, B axial is equal to mu naught into n into I into R square divided by 2 into R square plus X square whole to the power of 3 by 2. 
a most standard formula to be remembered for solving the board 5 mark problems and in competitive exams. Board 5 marks and in competitive exams like uh, JEE or else NEET exams and CET exams, this is an important formula. This is the derivation that we have to obtain here, calculation of magnetic field on the axial line. So what is the magnetic field on the axial line of a circular current carrying coil? Mu naught Ni R square divided by 2 into R square plus X square whole to the power of 3 by 2, where N is the number of turns, I is the current, R is the radiance and X is the axial line distance. Is that clear? So this is a formula to calculate the magnetic field on the axial line of a circular current carrying coil. Next we will study about some special cases using this. Is it clear? So here we got the formula that B axial is equal to mu naught and R square divided by 2 into R square plus X square whole power 3 by 2. Now we will discuss some special cases in this one which will be useful for both the board as well as, with, as, well as the competitive part of examination. Special case, special case. What is the magnetic field at the center of the coil? At the center of the coil, what is the value of x? x means this is the axial line distance. At center of the coil means this point is at this location. Therefore, x will become 0. At the center of coil, at the center of coil, what is the value of x? x is equal to 0. Therefore, B axial is equal to or B center, magnetic field at the center is equal to mu naught into n into i into radius is r only therefore r square divided by 2 into r square plus x means 0 therefore 0 square whole power 3 by 2. This implies b center is equal to simply I will write bc for b center b center is equal to mu naught ni r square divided by 2 into r square whole power 3 by 2. So here this two, this two will go off, then what is there? R cube will be remained. So this is B center is equal to mu naught n i into R square divided by 2 into R cube, R square and this square will cancel, these two will cancel, cube is remained, R cube. R square by R cube is R, therefore I can write it as B c is equal to mu naught into n i divided by 2 R, mu naught n i divided by 2R. Is it clear? What is the magnetic field at the center of the coil means mu naught Ni divided by 2R. So now, where does the magnetic field is maximum due to a circular coil? Where it is maximum means at the center of the coil it is maximum because for any other value of X, for any other value of X, whether X is, a, if this is the coil, if this is the coil and this is the axial line distance, this is origin for plus x or for minus x, whatever may be the value of x, whether it is a positive x or negative x, x square will be positive. So for any other value of x other than 0, this, uh, this value is going to be increased. As x increases, this denominator increases, denominator increases, this term will decrease. That means where does the magnetic field is maximum means magnetic field is maximum at the center of the coil. Graphically, if you want to draw that variation of magnetic field with the value of axial line distance can be drawn like this. It is maximum at the center of the coil and on either side it decreases. So it is maximum at the center of the coil, on either side it is decreases like this. This is maximum thing, is it clear? So this is B center which is equal to B axial maximum. B axial maximum. So we will have the maximum magnetic field at the center of the coil. This is one case and the other case, case 2. Generally case 2 will be used if asked for competitive part of examination. What is the magnetic field at a distance is equal to radius of the coil? So what is the magnetic field at a distance is equal to radius of the coil? That means x is equal to r. 
what is the value of b for x is equal to r that is a condi condition for x is equal to r b axial is equal to what b axial is equal to mu naught n i r square divided by mu naught n i r square divided by 2 into r square plus x means r therefore r square whole power 3 by 2 that is equal to mu naught n i into r square divided by 2 into 2 r square whole power 3 by 2. So, that is equal to mu naught n i r square divided by here 2 is there 2 power 3 by 2 2 into 2 power 3 by 2 is how much otherwise leave it 2 into 2 power 3 by 2 into square and square 2 will cancel r cube is remain therefore I can I can write r cube is it clear now what is its value 1 by 2 to the power of 3 by 2 into mu naught n i r square by r cube is 1 by r therefore mu naught n i divided by 2 r this is the value we are getting what is this b at x is equal to r magnetic field at x is equal to r b at x is equal to r is equal to what what is this term mu naught n i divided by 2 r mu naught n i divided by 2 r is nothing but magnetic field at the center of the coil which is this, which is the maximum value therefore i can write it as b center divided by 2 to the power of 3 by 2 so magnetic field at a distance equal to radius of the coil on the axial line will be equal to 1 by 2 power 3 3 by 2 times magnetic field at the center and magnetic field due to the circular coil is maximum at which location at the center of the coil so b is maximum at the center of the coil that is x is equal to 0 on either side of the coil if this is a current carrying coil when you go to this side or when you go to this side on either side the magnetic field goes on decreasing it is maximum at the center of the coil and this graph will also be asked in the competitive level of examination variation of magnetic field with the axial line distance graphically can be represented like this this is the graphical representation of variation of magnetic field with the axial line distance of the coil is it clear this is about the magnetic field due to the circular current carrying coil at the center its value is mu naught n i divided by 2 r useful for the competitive examinations like je or neat or cet exams this is important and this is the variation of magnetic uh, magnetic field at a distance is equal to radius of the coil is it clear next we'll go with the amperes circuit law okay mainly in this chapter we are going to calculate the magnetic field in different cases when you are calculating the magnetic field which is a vector quantity here it should have the direction and it should also have the magnitude in order to find the direction we are having some rules into in order to calculate the magnetic field strength we are having some other rules or some other laws are there first we'll discuss uh, about the rules that are used to find the direction of magnetic field there are three important rules in order to identify the direction of magnetic field what are the three important rules to find the direction of magnetic field means the first one right hand clasp rule right hand clasp rule already we have discussed about this rule or right hand thumb rule clasp rule we can call or right hand thumb rule also we can call second one is maxwell's cork screw rule maxwell's cork screw rule and third one is amperes swimming rule amperes swimming rule ampere swimming rule so these are the three rules which we can use in order to find the direction of magnetic field we can use any of these rules to find the direction of magnetic field but the best and the easy way to calculate the to find the direction of magnetic field is right hand clasp rule this is the rule which we are going to use frequently compared with the other two rules that is maxwell corkscrew rule and ampere swimming rule but we'll study how we are going to find out the direction for magnetic field using all these three rules i already discussed about the right hand class rule that is if a current carrying conductor is there carrying a current of i amperes so what the right hand class rule says means 
hold the current carrying conductor in your right hand. If this is the current carrying conductor, we are holding the current carrying conductor in our right hand such that in what way we have to hold the conductor means such that the thumb is pointing the direction of current. Then the fingers encircling the conductor are giving the direction of magnetic field. So right hand class rule says that if you hold the current carrying conductor in our right hand such that thumb is pointing the direction of current then the fingers encircling the conductor will give the direction of magnetic field. According to that if this is hold in this way here the magnetic fields are going into the board and this side the magnetic field lines are coming out of the board. Right side they are into the board, rin, right side they are directed into the board and to the left side of the conductor they are out of the board. So they are uh, following which kind of path means circular path they are following. So the magnetic field lines are like this tangential to this circular path, is it clear? This is right hand class roll. And second one is Maxwell's cork screw rule. Let me choose this is a this is the tip of the screw and this is the head of screw. This is head of screw and this is tip of screw. These are the threads of the screw. Now if I rotate the head like this the tip is going to move upward or downward. If I turn like this, the tip will move upward. That means you are having the tip moment upward when I rotate it in this way. That means in what way? In the anti-clockwise sense. If I rotate the head, then the tip is moving in upward direction. So what it says means here, Maxwell Cork screw rule says that if the advancement of the tip of the screw indicates the direction of current then the direction of rotation of head of screw will give the direction of magnetic field. Direction of rotation will give the direction of magnetic field. Is it clear? If the tip of, if the advancement of or the moment of tip of screw represents the direction of current, then the direction of rotation of head of screw will give the direction of magnetic field. Is screw yondu tip ano, tip hoktairo dari current and represent maartta idre, now, a head in a tricks the arrow direction in represent madate, magnetic field and represent madate. Okay, now, so in the similar way, if the screw, if the tip is to come down, then in what direction we have to rotate the head of screw? If the head of screw is rotated in clockwise sense, if it is rotated like this, it is nothing but opening of the uh, lid of a, any utensils. Suppose if there are some, jug, uh, if there is some, uh, uh, boxes are there if you want to open the lid you have to open it in this way this is opening and this is closing of lid how the in the similar way if i rotate like this it is going into if i rotate like this it is coming up so here also the same thing if i turn it like this it is nothing but this is coming down so current is in downward direction that means the direction of advancement of tip is that direction of current while the direction of rotation of the head will give the direction of magnetic field. This is nothing but the Maxwell's cork screw rule. Maxwell cork screw rule says that the direction, direction of advancement of the tip of the screw will give the direction of current. Then the direction of rotation of head of screw will give the direction of magnetic field. Is it clear? And third one is ampere swimming rule. What is this ampere swimming rule? Suppose this is a current carrying conductor. This is a current carrying conductor carrying a current of I amperes. Now, <coughs> below this current carrying conductor, a magnetic needle is pivoted. This is north pole and this is south pole. This is a pivoted like this. This needle is pivoted about this point and it is a free to rotate about this point. Now, if a person is swimming, this is a person who is swimming. So the person is swimming in which direction? The person is swimming in the direction of current. If the person swims in the direction of current with the magnetic needle below the conductor, he will notice that north pole of the needle will deflect towards his. Here this is the magnetic compass or the magnetic needle below the conductor. A person is swimming in the direction of current with his face pointing towards the conductor with the face of the person 
pointing towards the conductor. If a person swims in the direction of current with the, with the conductor facing him, then the magnetic needle below the conductor will deflect with its north pole towards the which hand? This is north pole, this is south pole. North pole is deflecting towards the left hand side of the swimmer. So, that is nothing but the direction of magnetic field. I am repeating it once again. Ampere swimming rule says that when a person swims in the direction of current with his face pointing the conductor, then the north pole of the magnetic needle below the conductor will deflect towards his left hand. So, this understanding this and this a little bit confusing, therefore, better you can go with this one which is very simple. That is why every time all the three will be giving the same answer, but understanding will be a little bit difficult in these two cases. Therefore, better use this one right hand class rule for finding the direction of magnetic field. Is it clear or not? So, for example, I will use this one in this case. This is, uh, this screw is kept like this. The current is moving like this means tip should go like this. Then I have to rotate it like this. I have to rotate it like this, then the tip will move forward. Rotating it like this means what magnetic field is in this direction, downward. That means north pole is deflecting towards the left hand. Same thing. Is it clear or not? So, this screw rule I am using here or use this one. The conductor is placed like this. Use your right hand to hold this one. Magnetic field is directed into the board. Here it is going into, therefore north pole will go that side. Is it clear? So, all the three are giving the same thing, but different uh, ways. Is it clear? Now, so what is the purpose of using these three rules means? In order to find the direction of magnetic field. These laws are helpful only in identifying the direction for the magnetic field. They never be useful in finding the strength of magnetic field, but only they will be useful for calculating the direction of magnetic field. Then what are the rules that are going to be used to find the strength of magnetic field? I already told you one is Biot servert law, which is a generalized law and the other one is the Ampere circuit law or simply Ampere's law. In order to find the direction of the magnetic field, we are using the right hand clasp rule or right hand thumb rule, ampere swimming rule or the Maxwell Corpse rule. To find the strength of magnetic field, I am going to use either Biot Servert law, Biot Servert law, this is a generalized law, and the second one is Ampere Circuit law, Ampere's circuit law or simply Ampere's law, circuit law. Already we discussed about the Biot Servert law and we discussed the application based on that Biot Servert law. Now we are going to use the Ampere Circuit law. What is Ampere Circuit law? Ampere Circuit law says, mathematically I will write Ampere Circuit law first. It is written like this. B bar, integral of B bar dot DL bar is equal to mu naught into I inside. What is this? B stands for magnetic field, DL stands for length and mu naught is mu naught only, permeability of free space. I in, I in stands for what? I in stands for the current inside the Amperean loop. I in stands for current inside the Amperean loop. What is this? This stands for what? This stands for integral. And this stands for what? Closed. This is integral and this is closed. So, you have to read it as closed line integral. This is read as closed. Here it is uh, integrating with respect to length. Therefore, it is closed line integral. Closed line integral of whom? Magnetic field. Closed line integral of magnetic field is equal to mu naught times current inside the Amperean loop. Simply, Ampere circuit law can be stated by remembering this mathematical formula. So, instead of remembering the statement for Ampere circuit law, better you remember this formula, then you will be knowing the formula as well as you are able to construct the statement for Ampere circuit law. What this says means the closed line integral of magnetic field is equal to mu naught times current inside the Amperean loop. Magnetic mu naught times current inside the Amperean loop. See here, Ampere circuit law statement I am writing using this mathematical formula. 
better always remember the formula and construct the statement using the formula. So, now what is this Ampere circuit of statements? Closed line integral. So, statement I am writing here statement for Ampere circuit law. Closed line integral, closed line integral, closed line integral of dash, closed line integral of what magnetic field? Closed line integral of magnetic field, magnetic field is equal to what here? Is equal to, is equal to what is this? Mu naught mu naught times or permeability time permeability times mu naught times what is this current current inside whom inside the ampere end loop therefore close the line integral of magnetic field is equal to mu naught times the current mu naught times the current inside ampere end loop Amperean loop, Amperean loop. Is it clear? Then what is this Amperean loop here? It is a two dimensional closed loop. Amperean loop is nothing but a two dimensional closed loop. While we are stating the Gauss theorem, we are considering a three dimensional closed surface, whereas while we are dealing with the Ampere's law, we will be, we'll be constructing a closed two dimensional loop. So, that loop may be circular, may be any other shape, but it should be two dimensional, but for symmetry cases we will be considering the symmetrical Ampere loops either in the form of a circle or in the form of a square or in the form of a rectangle like this we will be constructing the Ampere loop. So, using this uh, Ampere circuit law first we will go with one simple application that is calculation of magnetic field due to an infinite long straight current carrying conductor. So, application of Ampere and loop, first application, application number 1, application 1. Calculation of magnetic field, calculation of magnetic field, magnetic field due to infinite, infinite long straight conductor, infinite long straight conductor. So, how we are going to construct, sorry, how we are going to find out the magnetic field due to an infinite long straight current carrying conductor. For that, let me choose an infinite long conductor. This is finite length of the conductor. I have to indicate infinite long with the dotted lines like this. This is an infinite long conductor. Dotted line says that the length is infinity and here I is a current through it. So, we have considered a straight current carrying conductor of infinite length and carrying a current of I ampere. I want to construct, I want to calculate the magnetic field because of this conductor at this point, at this point due to this current conductor, I want to calculate the magnetic field at this point. Let me choose, choose this point is at a perpendicular distance of R from the straight wire. So, R is the perpendicular distance of the point where we are calculating the magnetic field from the conductor. Now, around this, uh, uh, through this point I have to construct the Amperean loop. So, for simple purpose here Amperean loop is chosen as a circular loop. This is the Amperean loop. Here the Amperean loop is a circle. So, this represents the Amperean loop. Am Amperean loop, Amperean loop, which is circular. So, here the loop is like this and this is a conductor, the conductor is like this, this is a straight conductor, this is a straight conductor and this is an Amperean loop. So, the Amperean loop is perpendicular to the conductor and the center of that uh, loop is coinciding with the conductor, is it clear? The conductor is passing through the center of the Amperean loop. Now, by symmetry, the strength of magnetic field here and the strength of magnetic field here, the strength of magnetic field here must be same. According to right hand class rule, the direction of magnetic field at any point if I choose, it is tangential to this circular path. So, the magnetic field here is like this, here it is like this, here it is like this. So, using right hand class rule, the magnetic field 
is found to be tangential to the Amperian loop. And inside this loop, how much current is passing? What is the current passing through this one? I is the current passing. So what is the current inside the Amperian loop? I is the current inside the Amperian loop. Now, according to the formula, we will write she obtain the uh, magnetic field due to the Amperian loop. So what we considered? Consider an infinite long, an infinite long straight conductor, infinite long straight conductor carrying, carrying I current, carrying I current. Now, construct an Amperian loop. Now, construct an Amperian loop, construct an Amperian loop. around the conductor, around the conductor. This ampere and loop must and should pass through the point where you are calculating the magnetic field. Let R be the perpendicular distance, R be the perpendicular distance of the point perpendicular distance of the point where we are calculating magnetic field, where we are calculating, where we are calculating magnetic field, where we are calculating the magnetic field. Now, according to this rule, what I can say? Using Circu ampere circuit law formula using Ampere's law, Ampere's law, we are having closed integral of B bar dot DL bar is equal to mu naught into I inside. This implies here B and DL bar, they are tangential to each other, therefore angle between them will be 0. So, DB bar direction and DL bar direction will be parallel, therefore the angle between them is 0, therefore I can write it as close integral of B into DL into cos of angle between B and DL which is equal to 0 degrees that is equal to mu naught into what is the current inside this ampere and loop inside this loop only I current is passing therefore I inside is equal to I this implies close integral of B into DL into cos 0 is 1 that is equal to mu naught into I. Now here B is the magnitude of magnetic, sorry, B is the magnitude of magnetic field and this magnitude here, 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 at every point on the circular loop, the magnitude will be same, that is B is constant, therefore write the constant out of integration, then closed integral of DL is equal to mu naught I. What is the closed integral of ampere and loop? What is the length of this ampere and loop? nothing but the circumference of the loop. Circumference of the loop is nothing but what? 2 pi r. If r is the radius, then the circumference of the loop is 2 pi r. Therefore, I can write as b into 2 pi r is equal to mu naught into i. From this, I can say b is equal to mu naught i divided by 2 pi r. Bring this 2 pi r to this side. So, this is the formula for magnetic field due to infinite long straight wire. That is a very important formula for all kinds of examination. Magnetic field due to infinite long straight wire is given by B is equal to mu naught I divided by 2 pi r. How the magnetic field is related with the distance? Magnetic field is inversely related with the distance. So, here I can say B is inversely related with the distance. But whenever there is a inverse relation between two variables, the graph is a rectangular hyperbola. This graph will be asked in the competitive part of examination how the magnetic field varies with the distance due to infinite long wire. The graph is rectangular hyperbola like this. Variation of B with the distance due to infinite long wire is a rectangular hyperbola like this. Is it clear? This is about the magnetic field due to infinite long straight wire which is obtained using the ampere circuit law. If you want to obtain the same formula using the Bayard Sovert law, it will be taking more than one and a half page. We have to go with the integration method and the length of a doing the problem will be uh, a little bit difficult compared with this ampere in ampere's law. So that is the advantage of ampere's law over the Bayard's overt law. 
we are going to find out this for, uh, magnetic field here using the Biot's overt law as well as using the Ampere's law. But which is easier means using Ampere's law we can find out easily within two, three t two to three steps. But using Biot's overt law it will be a lengthy procedure. Is it clear? That is why Ampere's law will be helpful in finding out the magnetic field for symmetry cases. So the Ampere and loop need not be circular always. It may be circular, may be rectangular, may be any other two dimensional closed loop. It is just like the case where Gauss, in the case of Gauss theorem, it is a three dimensional closed surface whereas in this case it is a two dimensional closed loop. Is it clear? But here one thing we have to remember is I inside. What is this I inside means? I inside is the current inside the loop. Suppose for example, this is an Amperean loop and here one current is going upward like this, its current is 3 ampere and another current is coming like this 2 ampere and one more current is there here some 6 ampere is there. Then if I want to use the ampere and loop I have to use closed integral of b bar dot dl bar is equal to mu naught into i inside. i inside means only if this is ampere and loop here the inside current is 3 and 2. This is outside current no need to worry about this. We have to consider only the inside current. But in this also this current is up, upward and this current is downward. Net current is if you take upward as positive downward is to be taken as negative therefore net current is 3 minus 2 therefore it is 1. So here I have to take 1 ampere. Suppose if the two currents are like this then what is this I inside? I inside is nothing but 3 plus 